Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 40 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linticum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show David and I are talking about that Australia is proving to be a location of increasing activity for the hyperscale data centers and a number of the global tech giants are growing their footprint in the country. Over recent months, there has been the partnerships between Megaport and IBM to deliver dedicated private access to the cloud to help businesses build the protected hybrid cloud environment they need to innovate and to scale. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips about hybrid and dedicated cloud. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. This is a great topic. I think Australia is excelling in the data center space, which is uh, you know unusual for a country like Australia, but it's interesting to see that happen. Oh, it truly is. Yeah, there's a huge amount of activity over here at the moment. So a great opening question, Dave, would be, why are not dedicated clouds and hybrid clouds mutually exclusive? Well, I think ultimately that uh, the ability to leverage managed service providers, which is really what this is, the ability to leverage hyperscale systems and, and uh, you know, very intense um, uh, data centers that are able to have you know, dedicated connections to the public clouds. We're talking about you know, dedicated circuits, things like that. You know, it really is a great option for lots of businesses out there. And I think that going forward, this is going to be something that a lot of enterprises are going to turn to because you're going to see this being a viable alternative to them hosting their existing, you know, traditional infrastructure and private cloud infrastructure and pairing it with a public cloud based infrastructure and really kind of have, having to manage the whole thing. And so what these new data center opportunities are in Australia is you're saying, listen, look, we'll manage it for you. We'll go ahead and host your data on the platforms that are native to the applications that you're running. And if you're looking to move in the cloud, we're able to move those workloads into the cloud and provide a dedicated circuit between your existing on-premise systems, which are going to be our on-premise systems, and a cloud-based system going forward. And I think that's a you know step in the right direction because really what we're doing if we're moving into the cloud, and we talked about this on the show before, we're going to be able to get you know, 60 70% of our workloads in the cloud. The other 30 40% are going to have to be stuck someplace. And if we don't want to maintain them as they're in maintaining our own data centers, which I don't think we do, then we're going to leverage technology such as this to make it happen. I think this is a step in the right direction. Bravo to Australia for kind of stepping up and you know, doing this for the Asia Pac region. Yeah, no, it truly is. In your opinion, how big does a company have to be to? to really push their services out to this scale? I think, you know, any company over a billion dollars in revenue is going to be a good candidate for this. And so that's going to be in the United States, small, medium-sized businesses, you know, that are just a billion bucks. And, and I, I think that, uh, you know, lower than that, I think it's going to be, we're going to have to figure things out ourselves and leverage public cloud typically exclusively and have a cloud, you know, cloud first, cloud only kind of an approach going forward because we're, we're basically strapped for cash. but we're bringing this down to a level that has been unseen before. So the ability to kind of necessarily, you know, leverage managed service providers and leverage cloud-based systems and have other people worry about it uh, is something that's going to be pushed down further and further into the small business realm. And I think maybe, you know, in five years, we'll be hearing about, you know, every business that's using cloud computing this way. And so in other words, their ability to kind of, you know, give it into a managed service, service provider hands. And so we're not having to deal with the ops and security and the governance. We have people who are professionals in doing that and basically do it for a hundred, you know, a thousand other companies and are able to do it better than we can. Yeah, it's really one of those things, isn't it? It's always that cost over scalability. Yeah, it is cost over scalability. So the, the reality is, as a business, we're not trying to do the coolest things, you know, and have everything in the cloud that's run by our own, you know, cloud ops team. We're trying to do things that are best for the business in terms of, uh, ROI that comes back from the investment in any kind of technology, including cloud. We're looking for agility. We're looking for time to market compression, you know, things like that. Any way we can move in that direction, that's going to be the way we want to move. And the thing is, we have to check our egos at the door and understand that it's going to make sense in some instances to outsource a lot of the things that we're traditionally doing on premise, including cloud computing, to other people that are able to manage it. Not necessarily turning it over to cloud. Cloud providers themselves are you know, not necessarily outsourcers. They're just going to provide the platform uh, to make it possible to move your applications into the public cloud. But going forward, this is going to be something 
where we're able to turn the details over to somebody else. It's going to be an intermediary between us and the public cloud providers and the traditional data center, in essence, basically decoupling us from having to deal with data center technology going forward. And I think that's what enterprises need to do. It just kind of frustrates me when I see enterprises building data centers or leasing data centers these days. They want to get out of that business. That's something that's not necessarily going to get them down to the bottom line or make them strategic in their industry. And there is that dynamics of the systems being re really quite outdated by the time you've built the system, by the, by the time you've built the data center. You know, it's, it's, it gives someone else that job of the heavy lifting, right? Yeah, I mean, what if we could buy a car uh, that was able to, in essence, update its technology on demand, you know, every couple of months and, and do so through a subscription service where you didn't have to actually pay for the capital cost of a car? Well, that's something we would buy all the time. I mean, Tesla's kind of approaching that because they have the dynamic updates that they run within the car because the car is software defined. But the thing is, that's really kind of the paradigm that we're shifting to. It's going to be service oriented, on demand oriented, and in essence, removing risk from our existing uh, customer base, our existing business, and pushing it out to somebody else that's able to better accept it. And I think we got to get in the, in the pattern of doing that, or else we're going to just run into one wall after the other. The ability to look at IT as somebody who has to do everything and anything and learn kind of new technology is so outdated that it's actually going to kill these businesses. And we're going to see businesses go under because people are too stubborn to kind of understand what needs to be outsourced, what needs to be pushed off to managed service providers and public cloud providers, you know, versus trying to do everything themselves. And I, I just, that's a fight I, I, I fight every day. And we're going to start seeing some, some impact from it pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah, we really will. I think, like you said, we already are. Certain organisations have felt the squeeze when they've just made that wrong decision several years back by investing into their own data centres and 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 really been caught short because that there is a, such a, a lower access point of uh, regards to cost that they can get involved in you know scalability through uh, you know having a, a managed pr provider out there. I think it just it makes so much sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, the reality is we got to make decisions that are uh, correct in terms of what's adjusted for the business. And ultimately, if we're looking at technology as a key enabling, enablement of agility, a key enablement of the business to be competitive, the ability to automate things that are automated, the ability to kind of do things more innovative and creative than we did 10 years ago, then that's perfectly fine. But that doesn't mean we have to own the technology. We don't have to own the data centers. Uh, we can leverage it. And so cloud computing is all about that. It's about basically using computing services, machine learning, things like that as a utility-based system. And one of the good, good things in doing that is we can put the onus on people who are changing and innovating the technology going forward, the platforms we're gonna use on the platforms of the cloud computing providers and the managed service providers. And that's where they should be. We're putting volatility into a domain, putting scalability into a domain, we're putting the business agility into a domain. Yeah, no, absolutely. And also the security aspect as well is a, a huge benefit to having that sort of scalability and, and the security aspect of a, a data center provider. So I uh, completely agree. And it brings us on nicely to your top three tips, Dave. So we'd love to hear your top three tips around, uh, you know, dedicated cloud and hybrid cloud. Yeah, number one, you know, hybrid cloud doesn't always mean private cloud is included. And so private cloud has a tendency to be, you know, kind of a bummer, so to speak, in terms of how we're leveraging hybrid cloud. So we can leverage a managed service provider that's paired with a public cloud. We can leverage our traditional systems that are paired with a public cloud. It's you know a pragmatic hybrid cloud. It's a bit different than traditional hybrid cloud. It's been defined by NIST, but it's perfectly fine to leverage that technology going forward. So don't think you have to buy OpenStack. Don't think you have to buy you know Microsoft Cloud Stack or things like that. You can leverage whatever technology you need to leverage that's going to be paired with a public cloud. And that doesn't mean that private clouds aren't going to be a good architectural fit in some instances, but it shouldn't limit you to how you, like, you're going to leverage hybrid cloud technology. Um, keep security at the top of the list. Again, we, we keep talking about that. We have a tendency as we start pushing things out to other outsourced providers that we're making security a lower priority. And the reality is it needs to be a higher priority as we're moving things out. So there was SB security plan approaches, technology, encryption, all these things should really be part of the ride. It needs to be systemic to everything that we do. And so if we're going to leverage an outsourced provider, you know, such as a managed service providers like we talked about in this in this show, then they should have a security plan. They should be able to present those things to you. They should be auditable. They should be able to comply, be compliant with the industry that you're in, whether it's healthcare, finance, things like that. They should be able to support those kinds of technologies. Those are not going to be a good candidate for leveraging a, a 
uh, managed cloud, managed provider solution. Then finally, make sure you can leave you know the data centers anytime for any reason. Um, I've left many a data center in a huff. And a few of them, you know, for weird reasons, I was able to walk into one without, uh, you know, presenting ID or showing a showing a key, and you know, have certain you know security issues that we're dealing with and things like that. And so, if you don't feel that you're getting the services that you need, whether it be security, governance, uh, the ability to support them, uh, the ability for them to support you and deal with the outages and deal with the things that data centers need to provide, in essence, take over the responsibility of running your systems as if they were you then you should really kind of walk out the door. And I think that the ability to kind of pull the trigger on that very quickly is going to be important because typically if they're making a couple of mistakes, they're going to make dozens of other mistakes and you don't want to be the, on the back end of those mistakes. So go ahead and break up. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with a breakup when it comes to a data center provider. <laughs> no, you got to go, guys. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Dave, thanks for being part of the Australian show this week. I think we covered some great ground there. No, it's great to be here. It's uh, great to see more innovations coming out of Australia. So love the country and love the innovations that are coming out of it. Keep up the great work. Excellent. Tell your friends. And thanks for watching the Australia show this week. We really hope you enjoyed watching it. And remember to like, subscribe and comment and share this channel to your friends and colleagues. Dave is on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're on Facebook, Instagram as well. So check us out there. The links are all uh, below in the description box. And remember to stay tuned for next week. And if you're catching the show for the first time, we've had a few technical problems this week, so hopefully everything's okay. Uh, But you can check out all the other shows we've done as well in the description box. There's links to all those videos as well. So take care, look forward to next week.